Uh, yeah, the crumpers are in my bag. Tupperware containers. Getting swapped out for these. I don't know how to um, get that to seal now because now it's too big. specialized hardware. But some of this could be built into each other. You could use the same concept to um, the manufacturing standpoint. I'm going to make it harder on you. Let's stand over your shoulder with the camera. Okay. Each end, um, we basically have a couple of AC to DC power supplies, just basic wall warts, same things that power any any electronics that you might have around. But they're set up to run at a pretty high voltage, so in our case, we're running it at about um, about around 50 volts ish. Um, you need a higher voltage depending on how long you run the cable, um, and also like what type of switches you're using. Some draw more power than others. Um, and then at each at each way station like this, at each node, there are, is a DC-DC converter which steps down the high voltage coming in um, from each side down to the voltage that the switches run on. These run on 7.5 volts. Um, so it powers this switch and then it goes out to the next switch. And this is actually passive power over Ethernet. Um, it's a fairly standard design, but it uses a higher voltage than normal. Um, so basically, on 100 megabit uh, Ethernet signaling, only four of the eight wires are used. There's eight wires and a Cat5 cable, but only four of them are used for 
at the actual Ethernet. So it leaves four wires essentially left over, two pairs for carrying power over. So that's what we're doing. So we have data on two of these pairs and on the other two we have basically 50 volts. And then at each point we step it down to the 7.5 that these switches run on. And then basically these are off the shelf power over ethernet injectors. They're designed for passive power over ethernet, which is what we're doing. So the power comes in, like the, this comes in from the main line. So power and data are on here, but we don't want the power going into the switch ports. So these are just off the shelf. We have them shipped from China basically. You can buy them on eBay really cheaply. They're not very expensive. And it has two wires coming from it. The power wire, which is split, is just basically just split out. It's just broken out from the main connector. And then this goes to the DC DC converter. And then we also this is also a splitter. So we also bought these off of eBay. These are barrel jack splitter so it, it takes in a barrel jack and then it goes to two of these and what I did was as I just cut off one of the barrel plugs and stripped the wires and soldered them to this DC DC converter um, which is also we also also purchased on eBay they're like two dollars a piece they're very cheap basically the cheapest way to do this and then we have the plug that goes into the switch which we just cut off of the power plug that came with the switch and we have this set to the voltage of the switch so this is adjustable you just adjust this potentiometer and you can set it to whatever voltage you want up to like something around 32 volts which is way more than we need basically the two most common switch voltages are 7.5 and 12 volts um, so you can also get fixed voltage 12 volt ones but for 7.5 they don't really make those so you really want an adjustable one but these are off the shelf they're very cheap um, so the DC DC converter powers this, but the, the power coming to it is also split out to another power over ethernet splitter, but this is a power over ethernet injector. When you buy these things, they'll come with both of these. So one is an injector and one is a splitter. Um, but essentially the only difference is that one has a female barrel plug and one has a male barrel plug. So they're actually the same. They just have this plugged into the power wires, the two, the four power wires that are in, um, that are in this line coming in from the data wires. So, you know, the data wires then go into the switch and the power wires, um, go to your DC DC converter and back out to the next node. So you could, you could just do this and, but you wouldn't have any switch power. So this would plug into both of these switch ports, but you have nothing powering the DC DC converter. So we just use the splitter splits out the power coming in, plugs in the back end of the power going out, and also powers the switch. Um, so it's actually pretty simple from an electrical standpoint. You just have power coming in, and you have splitters at each one, which take out the high voltage, step it down, power the switch. It's all self-contained. Um, so one of the main things that we were trying to achieve with the system is using off-the-shelf components, which is what allows it to be so cheap. Um, so all of this is eBay junk. I mean, this is all, I mean, basically I had an idea of what I wanted it to do. You know, we, we had power coming in and data and somehow we had to split it out. We had to get the power out of the data lines, out from the data lines and step it down to the switch voltage, go through the switch and back out. So that's all, essentially all it is. This is a box. It takes in power and a data line, goes through a switch, and the power and data go back out. The only thing that happens with the power line is that it's split out so we can power the switch with the DC DC converter. And that's essentially all there is to it. So.